Welcome to In the Spotlight with Lee Ellery here on Swan TV. Um, this March is, is Cerebral Palsy Awareness Month from the 1st of March to the 31st of March and in particular on the 25th of March is Cerebral Palsy Awareness Day. And with me to talk about Cerebral Palsy and, and and what causes it and things like that are two experts in my opinion from the charity Cerebral Palsy Cymru, the national charity for those of us who are Cerebral Palsy here in Wales. Um, with, with me is Jenny Carroll, the Chief Executive of Cerebral Palsy Cymru and Marie Wood, the fundraising director for the charity. So welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you very Thank much. You, Starting with you, uh, then, Jenny, uh, can you tell me a bit about uh, Cerebral Palsy Cymru and where it first started? Yes, yeah, Cerebral Palsy Cymru started 32 years ago. It was set up by families of children with cerebral palsy for children and families. So it's always one of the big strengths, we say, is we're an organisation set up by families for families and um, that was 32 years ago and set up by a set of founding parents and it's a centre that provides very specialist intervention for children and young people with cerebral palsy from all across Wales from right to the north um, to the south and to the west so any child or family with cerebral palsy um, can come to the centre. And I, I believe, in fact I do know, that my mum was a, a fundraiser for, for the centre in the beginning when it first uh, had permission to come to Wales initially because I used to have to go to London for my treatment and uh, I remember coming to the centre and there was always an atmosphere there uh, wherever it, where, whenever you used to come into the centre, there was always a welcome for you um, by in particular Glenis, who's still there, I gather. Yeah, Glenis was one of the founding parents and yet she's still there. She's our family support coordinator and that's a really important role for us to, to kind of support families and families really get a benefit from talking to someone who's been there and, yeah, and been, had those experiences. Yeah. And yeah, your, your mum there was very involved right at the beginning. Yeah, and, and I gather that the centre uh, runs totally on uh, fundraising because it doesn't get it doesn't get funded from government, is that correct? So it, get, it gets some funding via service level agreements for services for older children, but I think our Better Start, Better Future programme, which is for babies from naught to two and a half, that's all funded that's, by the yeah. fundraising. Yeah, so it works out about 80% is fundraised um, you know, by ourselves and then about 20% is from the contracts with LHBs, local health boards. So coming to... Um, Marie, now I'm going to talk a bit about the fundraising aspect of the centre and then come back to Jenny to finish. Um, can you tell me some of the some of the events that you've got planned for the month of March? Yeah, sure. So March is a really important month for us, Cerebral Palsy Awareness Month. So we do lots of activities to raise awareness of cerebral palsy, but also to fundraise as well to help us support the brilliant work that we do across Wales. So the first thing to mention is our Facebook fundraiser, 70 Miles in March. So we piloted this last year. So this is for people to run, walk, swim, cycle, basically to do 70 miles in whichever way they'd like to and to be sponsored to do so so to raise money for Sarah Palsy Cymru so that's happening during the whole of March but then we're also selling these lovely wristbands green so green is the colour of cerebral palsy awareness and the ribbons so we're encouraging people to buy these and wear them to show support um, but we're also encouraging our families to tell their stories um, on social media um, about what it's like to have cerebral palsy and what challenges it, challenges it, it creates and how we can we can support them as a, as a charity and how we can make a difference. I think you've hit the nail on the head then eh, when you said um, talking to families to encourage them to tell their own story and how it can make a difference because I find 
as a as a disabled activist when I'm when I'm doing work and my campaigning work, I'm telling my story and my story is getting out there yeah. through Swan TV and through the, this show actually. Yeah. Um. So I think I think support from uh, people like Swan TV is a good thing. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, one of the other things we'll be doing is asking schools and businesses to go green. So um, again, as a raising awareness, but also as a fundraising initiative. So asking whole classes or whole um, whole schools even to wear green and to pop a pound in the pot to have Borsi Cymru. And we're also encouraging buildings to go green. So kind of significant buildings in Wales. Yeah. We should probably have a conversation mm. with the museum yeah. before we leave, leave today. But again, just to, to raise awareness. Um, we're also hoping to be down at the Senate with our ribbons, asking members of the Senate to show support for the work we do um, and just to sp spread the word as widely as possible really. And I know that you have got, because we have talked about this um, in previous conversations, because I know I'll be starting work with you in the future doing some things behind the scenes which we can't discuss now, but they will come clear in the future. Watch this space. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so tell me some of the people that you've got supporting you in terms of your ambassador scheme at the moment. Yeah, so we've got a huge range of supporters. We've got people who help us raise our public profile. So we have wonderful support from Mark Lewis Jones, who lives locally, as you know, he's a very well known actor, Welsh actor. Um, we last year announced Olivia Breen. So she's a, the Welsh, I saw that. Yeah, Welsh Paralympian. She's incredible. Um, she's got a great connection with Wales. Her grand still lives just down the road from us. So she's able to visit us a lot. And she's a great inspiration for the families and children we work with and a huge success um, then we also have fundraising ambassadors so people who help us with our fundraising so a, a huge range really but the brilliant thing is they all just so show huge passion and support for the work we do and help us be out there a bit more than we can do as a very small staff team so if there was one thing that you could just closing up the fundraising aspect if there was one thing that you could say to decision makers, especially those in the Senate to support you, yeah. what would it be and what would it be and why should they support you? Yeah. What I always say, Lee, is that you know, we know we make a life change in difference to yeah. children and their families. So both the therapy we provide to babies, but also the, the support, emotional support and practical support we, we give to families as well. And the more money we raise, the more money we have, the more we can do. So we did a survey um, last summer and I think 47% of families said that we were the only charity who supported them. We were the only support that they'd had. So the more money we raise, the, the more brilliant work we can do. So any additional investment we can get will help to make a real difference to, to families. <laughs> well, the like, investment in babies and children when they're so young is an investment in their whole future to go the yeah. life long. So it's a really good I time was, to invest. I was saying just, just now um, to someone actually that I was having a conversation with my dad in the car um, a, couple, a couple of weekends ago and he said to me that the doctors had told him and my mum when I was born to not expect me to live past 20 um, because I just won't have the outlook in life. I might not be able to speak, I might not be able to have an education, um, but believe it or not, this April I turned 40. No, so, surely so, not. So I, I've <laughs> done that, done that yes. twice over you know so it, yeah. ju it just goes to show that people with cerebral palsy can achieve and can do what they want to do it may take them twice as long to do something um but especially with the physiotherapy that the center provides because i know i've been through it myself yeah. it does provide a, a good service Particularly now for the young young ch ch children coming through, yeah. um, I recommend the centre 
wholeheartedly to anyone that's looking for support, especially for um, early use, yeah, particular thanks. yeah. For, yeah. Um, yeah. So in conclusion then, uh, is there anything that Jenny wants to highlight before we end the show or even you, Marie? I think it would be interesting to talk a little bit more about early intervention and the reason why we at Cerebral Palsy can we focus on early intervention and that's basically because we know that's the time when we could make the greatest difference. Um, yeah, your nervous system at that point is much more plastic, yeah. it's much more um, adaptable to change and we know that that, that ability to change reduces. You, you're born with billions more neurons than you need and, and they which ones survive depends on which ones you use. Yeah. So it's really important not only that you use them, but you use them to make good connections. It's the ones that connect and talk to each other that then go on to, to live and to create the pathways that you use. So around the age of two, there's a massive period of, of death, cell death. So you need to kind of use a lot of those neurons before that period of two years old, which is why our service is designed to really make the most of that period before children are two years old. So bearing in mind a lot of the children we see are born before term age. So our service goes from naught to two and a half post birth, which basically equates to covering all of the children, even those born preterm up to the age of two years post gestation. I know you're focusing on um, early years, but say, <laughs> Say a family approached you or something with someone a bit young, say about a teenager that mm -hmm. age, would you be able to support them? Some of our challenge at the moment is not having enough funds to support because the the ability and the the um, the skill set is there to to support children from birth, as we've said, right through and past adulthood. You know, to older older adults. But um, our resources, unfortunately, allow us that at the moment we're really prioritising for the Better Start, Better Future program. Yeah. So all our fundraising money goes towards that. Um, the referrals that we get from health boards they're often to, for children that are that are older. So we We'll ask those, you know, if they can get a referral from their health board. And sometimes we have very specific plans or programs. We run a program called Escapades, which is for children probably around teenage years that have got quite complex needs. And then we run a Jungle Explorers program, which is for children with unilateral cerebral palsy, so only one side um, yeah. affected. And those programs are quite, um, have been really, really popular. So they are only as and when then, or? So they're as and, as and when we get funding, really. We've been very fortunate to get lottery funding for those programs, which has been really helpful, yeah. and children in need funding. One of the things that we are soon to develop is a self-funded service. So it's possible that we could help families, um, perhaps if they were interested in, in, in some therapy that way. So we would always say for families to please just get in touch with us, speak, speak to us for some speak. advice, and we'll find a way to support, uh, yeah. support them if we can. Um, and, and for anyone interested in fundraising, of course, I would say this as the fundraiser, <laughs> please just check out our website. There's loads of different ways you can be involved whether you'd like to fundraise for us whether you'd like to volunteer for us um, we have cake and tea for cp in may so you could have a little cake bake and raise some money for us that way but you could just also you know help uh, um, give us a helping hand um, so yeah just look look at the website and please get in touch um, if you've been inspired by anything we've talked about today well thank you both for joining me today i hope that i can I help you in Actually. some way in the future Thank uh, you. because I know that I, I will be doing all I can even after this interview I'll be going telling people all about you so thanks again for joining me and good luck for the future. Thank thanks you. Lee. Well that's the end of another edition of In the Spotlight with Lee Ellery. I hope you've enjoyed today's show and I'll see you again soon.